So hi, everyone, and welcome to the next guest expert call with the SALT Network. My name is Shane, and I'm the host of these calls along with my partner, Benjamin. We like to create connections between both experts in different areas of specialty or industry, and not only potential clients, but people who are looking for not only connection, but answers. And this gives us an opportunity to have someone present a specialty uh, business or a skill set, but also have a discussion and a Q&A one-on-one with the expert. So if you're interested in joining us on a call so that you can listen in or get your questions answered, please go to thesaltnetwork.com. You can sign up for a mailing list and you'll find out who the next speaker is or the upcoming speakers because we are booked through the end of the year. And if you're someone who's interested in coming on and presenting, you can also contact us. It's a great place to practice your signature speech. It's a great way to connect with people who might become clients. And it's also a great way to just get your message out as we do broadcast both the audio and video of these calls afterwards. So today I'm really excited to bring on our guest expert who is Holly Copeland. She is a certified human potential coach, which is a background that we share but she has quite a different specialty and perspective than I do, even though we have similar training background. She has a company called HeartMind Alchemy, which unites ancient wisdom with modern science. And I'm really excited to have her talk about how she rewired her brain with meditation. And that's gonna be her presentation tonight. So Holly, welcome and take it away. Thank you so much, Shane, um, really appreciate being here, being asked to be on, um, and excited to share with everybody. So um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. Like Shane said, I am a human potential coach, uh, and I also am a scientist. Um, my background is in ecology and geography, and I had a 20 year career with the Nature Conservancy and worked for the university, worked for the University of Wyoming as a migration scientist. And um, a few years ago, I had kind of a big, I don't know, come to Jesus moment in my life, I guess. <laughs> and things started to fall apart. And I, um, from that falling apart, I really retooled with meditation really changed my life entirely. And so what I'd like to share tonight is that story and what I have come to as I look back on what happened um, and is still happening and evolving, um, have kind of articulated seven things that I think were really key to that whole process. And so I'm gonna share those with you all tonight um, and welcome questions on that. So, um, you know, as I said, I uh, had this kind of watershed <laughs> um, moment and and really it was a culmination of a few things but in short it was I suffered from um, mold illness I actually um, it turned out that the bed that I was sleeping on had mold hidden inside it I couldn't see and uh, it made me really sick and um, I had no idea for over six months why I was so sick uh, and so that that was happening. And then the job that I was at, I was uh, worked for the Nature Conservancy and it was a wonderful job, but I'd been there for 20 years and I was really um, just burnt out. I'd been working so hard and didn't know how to sense that there was something else I really wanted to do, but also just needed to stop the burnout and figure out how to how to put the brakes on and live life differently. And so I quit that job and uh, took a new job um, with the University of Wyoming. And when I did that, I actually realized that um, I, I didn't actually believe that being a scientist was, was really like the thing I wanted to write down as my career. And I sensed that there was something else and I did a lot of soul searching to figure out what that was. And it turned out that that was coaching. So that's what led me here. And, um, and on that path, um, I really learned, I, I realized in that whole journey that while I had spent my whole life exercising and taking care of myself with food, and I'd always paid attention to those things, the one thing that I really hadn't paid attention to was my mind. And my mind was 
you know, like I think a lot of people is kind of rife with monkey mind and not settled and thinking a lot about the past or the future. And um, I realized that that was inherently kind of making me miserable. And I didn't know how to shift it, but I kind of became determined to shift it. And I essentially took my science-based biohacky disposition that I already had and just poured it into that, um, like hacking my brain was essentially what I decided I needed to do. And I, the first book that really was a watershed that changed my life was a book called The Open Focus Brain. And I learned about the alpha brain. I'm going to talk more about that. But as I read more and more and learned about um, you know, meditation and really more about meditation and what it was about, I, I just started doing all these things and, and it worked so phenomenally well um, that I essentially rewired my brain and became what I feels to me today, like a fundamentally different and much happier person. Um, and so what I really became um, guided to do in my coaching work was to help other people do that. That if it worked so well for me, and then I would really uh, like to spend my life helping other people f sort of step out of the crazy monkey mind rat race and learn how to change your life through changing your mind. And no one can do it for you. So that's the thing about just like exercise or eating, at the end of the day, we have to make these choices ourselves. We have to choose how, uh, how to shift our perspective. Um, and although I had read about that my whole life, I'd been a seeker and somebody who'd read about being in the present moment and meditating and I tried these things, I had never been actually able to do it, never actually been able to learn how to live in the present moment. Uh, and, and that's what I learned over the last year and a half. And that's what I want to share. So among other few things. Um, so I wrote this article in uh, Medium. You can go see it. We can put a link to it. Um, and uh, described that whole story in this article. Um, and I'm in the middle of actually writing a second follow-up article that hopefully will be out in a week or two, where I really thought, sat down and identified seven keys that were the things to me that were the biggest game changers in how I shifted my brain. Um, and so I'm gonna walk through those. Um, and, you know, as you can see, it's like the first one is just about about becoming a warrior of your own brain and, and neuroplasticity and what that means. Um, learning to meditate and understanding why that's such a powerful game-changing technique. Um, escaping the not enough trap, and I'll talk a little bit more about what that actually is, but it's changing your thoughts and your, your perceptions about who we really are in our own mind. Um, about guarding your mental inputs, being the gatekeeper to what comes in. Um, and then some basic ones that, you know, I'd done for a long time, and I think they're still fundamentally important, but, you know, what you eat, um, movement and light and sleep um, are all fundamentally important, but I think they're um, down, the, down the list of these other top four, um, but I think they belong on the list, so I, I think it's important to highlight them. Um, so the first one is really understanding that you know, you have this magical, changeable brain inside you. Um, and through the gift of neuroplasticity, you have the power to change your brain. And um, I'm realizing, Shane, I wanted to show this video, but I'm not sure that the sound will work. Um, it's only like three minutes, but I would have to share my sound. So maybe I will not do that. So I'm not sure, might be a little hard to do.